What's up guys, welcome back to Fish and Hex. In today's video, we're gonna continue our subscriber Q&A with Mike Lemming, and we're gonna do what, maintenance today, Mike? We are. All right, man, let's let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, guys, first off, thanks for watching. Um, I don't have a ton of views on mine, uh, but I've seen Travis's uh, videos, and there's quite a few, and I've gained some subscribers, so thank thank you guys, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm slowly climbing. Um, it's just nice to see a couple here and there. Um, but let's just get into it. Uh, so first off, there's like some debate online. I've tried to figure out what I need to do. I've been doing 10% water changes weekly, not even 10% because I have like probably, I have a 30 gallon with a 10 gallon sump. Mm. I don't know what that comes out to water, water volume wise, but yeah, everybody on says yeah. 10, 10% weekly, but I've also seen people say 20% bi-weekly. What do you think? Well, uh, I mean, I've done both. I've done the 10% weekly, the 20% bi-weekly, and I've actually done like a... 30% monthly and sometimes I've even skipped a month or two. It just depends uh, The key factor that's going to determine how long your water change is is going to be is either your maintenance routine when it comes to changing filter socks How good your skimmer is how much you're feeding? Uh, you know just general maintenance in general, you know general maintenance in general will determine you know how often you have to do that water change um, But it's good to have a schedule like for example. I do a 20% every other week I do it on Sunday. It's just bi-weekly, 20%. Um, sometimes I do a little bit more. It just depends on how much water I feel like making at that time. And with my, uh, with my uh, smaller uh, system at the moment, you know, I got the bigger one coming, mm -hmm. but with my smaller system at the moment, I, is it something where I should do weekly because of the impact on such a small water volume, you know? Well, I mean, if it's convenient for you, I mean, there's going to be convenience around the water change. If you can do a weekly 10%, do it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, just be consistent. Um, I do about four well. gallons every week. I try to anyway. Oh, yeah, that's super easy, man. You know, you just yeah. fill up a five-gallon jug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do your Just continue doing your 10% weekly, and then I wouldn't change that now. So, as you know, I'm trying to get the uh, – back to the parameter thing, trying to get this thing going. I did my – or get, you know, my calcium down, alkalinity mm -hmm. down. I did a 10%. I was a little late on it. I think I did it like Monday morning, um, and I have yet to check, but I'm hoping with these 10% that everything's going to go down. Um, it takes time. It will, though. It evens yeah. itself out. Yeah, it's an ecosystem, and, and you can't make you know drastic uh, changes to an ecosystem without having some kind of effect. Mm -hmm. So and the safest way would now that you have if – if you had a fish only, I would say go ahead and do the drastic water changes. But since you have coral now and you do have SPS, you have to you have to take the time, or, or you're gonna you know you're gonna lose your stuff. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so here's a question too, because my sump has just got detritus all over it. Mm -hmm. um, first off, do you take the time to like actually clean out your sump tank, regardless of like the equipment, but the actual tank? Well, uh, you... for this particular build, I have the first section, which is a refugium. Like you remember, like you know what. Like two sixty percent or something, yeah, 60%, right? Yeah, uh, and I use a magnet cleaner to clean the glass, the the left side, and then the front. Of course, I clean that. Uh, I do that probably once a week just to clean the glass to make it look somewhat presentable. Um, as for the chambers themselves, like for the skimmer and all that stuff, I only clean that in the return section when I clean the pumps themselves. That way, I can uh, remove the pumps completely and then get underneath the pump. So I really don't mess with cleaning them. Unless so it's not too often. Then, right? No, no, it's like uh, the return pumps like every three months, and the skimmer is about every three months or so. It just depends on how uh, how. It well, that, that was one of my questions yeah. too. Um, when you did, because I, I know you put out videos about like your return pump and your mm -hmm. skimmer. Um, so that was one of my questions: how often you did that? So you're saying like three months. It depends. Like I had the biopillar reactor, and I just uh, one of the which really like gunks it up, right? Yeah. Well, I've been using the uh, a different type of biopellet, so I'm actually going to switch up uh, to a different brand that uh, doesn't have that uh, side effect of the biopellet. So that's something that's in the works. I mean, I just don't want to. I'm not going to switch out all my biopellets right, right away because I'll end up end up cycling them. So, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it just depends on. You know, if, if the pump starts to, you know, get impacted by the bio pellets or detritus or something like that, then it would be sooner. And I could tell because the overflow will start gurgling. I'm not getting enough flow through the reactors or whatever. So I'll make the changes from there. But it, it's usually a set three months for both. In this yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's good to know. Like I said, with this new setup, I'm trying to do everything, you know, spot on without cutting corners like I did my current tank. Mm -hmm. um, this is just another, like, pointless question i mean i know what you should do but how often do you clean the glass in your main tank is that like a daily thing uh well i let the glass dick like it's usually an every three day thing just do it on schedule but i like to use the glass as a guide or a judge of how my tank is reacting to uh you know uh feeding and if i need to do a water change it, it, you know the glass will get dirtier sooner 
I'm not talking about full on covered, but it will start to show a little bit of brown or green. Uh, so every three days is about average. And if I start having to clean it every other day or every day, then I know that I'm due for a water change. Uh, I'm doing something wrong because I mine's fuzzy every day I get home from work. Yeah. Well, we discussed that your you know your last video that you're off ATO water. You know, it's yeah, 63. You know, something. Water, yeah, so. 60, 65, something. Yeah, that's too high. Um, yeah. It's just my my current cheap. Uh, RODI is just mm -hmm. not doing good. Yeah. Well, that's so the first week I was testing like three. I used it a half dozen times and then I was testing like 30 and now I'm to the point where it's like 80. Mm -hmm. And the thing is brand new. So it's, I, it's kind of not even being used. I've just been buying distilled water. Mm -hmm. So I plan on getting something official to, you know, kind of make my water instead of just half-assing, you know? Yeah, and once you get your nitrates and phosphates and all that stuff under control, then cleaning the Speaking glass of, be like that. I bought a phosphate test kit, zero. Well, there's zero because your algae in the tank is using up the all available phosphates. Good news. <laughs> that's, that's what's going on. I love people like, yeah, I'm testing zero, but like, yeah, but you have algae, so where's the all phosphorus of, going? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's getting eaten by the, you know. Um, so on to my next question, um, you know, a lot of these questions are like, Again, like I just said, trying to set myself up for success for the next one. Um, but with – you're using a dual reactor, right, the BRS dual reactor? Yeah, yeah, yep. Um, it's probably different from tank to tank, but, like, how often are you changing the media for that thing? 30 days. Every 30 days I'll um, – Both? Yep. I'll, I Well, basically the uh, the carbon will get exhausted before the GFO, but for the sake of maintenance, I just change them both at the same time. I use a, a smaller amount of GFO just because then I'm not wasting as much. I do uh, about half as much as the tank recommends. Um, just With like the BRS calculator? Uh, yeah, well, off the GFO in general. I use a standard GFO. Uh, it's two cups for my tank size. I do a cup uh, just because, you know, I'm not trashing my tank with food or anything. So I don't feel yeah. the need to, to, you know, use that much. Plus, it tumbles better with less GFO. And then, again, I use a cup of the uh, BRS ROX uh, 0 0.8 carbon, uh, which is awesome stuff. I love that stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to use yet. I mean, you seem to be having success, so I'll probably just follow your lead. Yeah. Um, it's good stuff. So I, mean, I should have got it. I wish I had it years ago, man. It was it's just really good stuff. So Yeah. Um, on to my next question, um, and this is just kind of like reflecting on what I do and kind of comparing. Uh, but when you're doing your water changes, say, all right, today is your – every other Sunday, you're doing your water change. Water's made. Mm -hmm. Other than the actual water change, what else, what else are you doing? Like in the tank in general, I, just well, in when, general it comes, when it comes wise. to my water changes, I mean, know that I did that bi-weekly water change video. It seems to yeah. be pretty popular, actually. Who wants? To, I mean, I don't know how many people watch thirty-two minutes of me jacking off of the tank, but uh, it was uh, basically um, I will siphon out all the detritus because it's a bare-bottom tank. So uh, I'll turkey base the rocks and everything, spread the detritus, have the pumps blowing, uh, have fil leave the filter socks on there, so I'll get up all the detritus, uh, siphon out as much as I can, then do the water change. Um, and then, you know, pull a macroalgae, anything like that. Um, nine out of ten times, my GFO and carbon change do not fall on the same day as my water change. So, like, sometimes during the week, I'll just do the uh, GFO change. Um, and, I mean, I mean that's kind of good, too, because you don't, I mean, you don't want to change out a bunch of GFO and then do a, you know, decent-sized water change at the same time because you might end up pulling too much out too quickly. So it kind of works out that way. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's probably not a big deal if you change GFO and, and have a, you know, 30% water change. Yeah, I haven't that. been doing all that. It's like every third time I'm like blowing off the rocks. Maybe I'm lazy, which I shouldn't be in this hobby. But um, I usually, of course, do my filter stock after the water change. But like as far as a ton of stuff, I don't go crazy. Mm -hmm. I feel more accomplished with my – with. My, with my overflow that I'm actually doing water change and dealing with the BS that comes along with the siphon. Well, once that, um, once that situation's over with, you'll find, which is going to be soon, dude, get. soon. Yeah. I'm pumped for that. Mm -hmm. That's going to make life a lot easier, dude. Oh yeah. Cause once I get that, then the ATO can go or the, uh, yeah, the auto top off can go in and then it's just going to make life so much easier. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm really looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. Um, what else I got? Um, how often do you clean your uh, overflow box? You get in there. I mean, I know you're meticulous with I've never everything. Cleaned it. You never uh, clean it. No, really? Well, two reasons why is because I can't get to it. The, the basically, I have this low profile in the front that's in the yeah. tank, and then I have the bigger, you know, the actual drainage part is in the back behind the tank. I couldn't get access to it if I tried. Plus, I have it sealed. The top is sealed with a a piece of acrylic. Um, or not really sealed, but pretty much kind of like taped down. Yeah. Uh, and it's, 
probably salt and crusted now. So would you assume there's probably a bunch of bullshit in the bottom of that, like the first there, chamber? There probably is, but it won't affect the flow because the tubes actually come up at an angle. Yeah. So it's not like you know you're siphoning off the bottom of the box. Yeah. So well, that's good because I've seen people that like the guy online I watch. He's actually out of Quincy, I think, but he. He says every time he does a water change, he gets in there with like a toothbrush and a siphon and, and does it every time. I mean, it might be great. Yeah, more power but to you, I guess. Not needed. Yeah. I'm not going to waste yeah. my time. No. All right, cool. Um, so this, we kind of talked about this privately a while ago. Um, might even have been on a video, our first video. Either way, um, power heads in your sump chambers. I've heard it's nice to kind of, instead of having to try to just settle on the bottom, it's nice to kind of have it moving around to get collected in areas where it should, like your your sponges or gets shot back in your tank. Therefore, it'll overflow back into your filter socks. Um, you don't use power heads in your sump, right? No. I mean, and plus I had the refugium section there, which, you know, the detritus is going to come down, go into the filter socks. So it's not really going to be anything moving around in, in the original chamber. And I don't really see the concept or the idea behind putting a, a power head in any other section because you're just going to stir up detritus and yeah. have it sucked up in your pump could affect the pump and then get shot into your display tank and have like pieces of stuff flying everywhere. So I don't really see the benefits of that. Um, You'd yeah, rather just like siphon it out, get it out of there. Yeah. Just siphon it when you do your maintenance, you know, you can either do it when you do a water change, take water out of the sump instead or both the main tank and the display and the sump. Or just do it when you clean your return pump and your skimmer. I don't really see any other need to have detritus floating around freely in the you know in the sump like that. Because my tank's almost three months old. I, just, I don't even know anymore, dude. Um, but there seems to be quite a bit in you know first chamber is where it comes down into my skimmer and stuff. Second chamber is a few chamber. Third chamber of return. But my first and third it seems like there's shit all over. So like I've tried to suck it out and, it's, and I, it works, but it's just. It's not easy because I have such a small sump right now. But once you get those filter socks hooked up there, you'll be taking yeah. all that stuff that is settling is what's coming from the display tank. Coming so, through. Yeah. So, right. I mean, there's a, that's, you know, it's all, you know, shit rolls downhill. So, you know, yeah. you, you, once you're able to pull that out with a filter sock, you're, you're not going to be as dirty, if that makes sense. So. Yep, I hear you. Um, and this might be another point of this question. Um, you ever clean your uh, ATO reservoir? Uh, when I used to uh, run calc through it. I rinse it out every once in a while, but uh, there really is no need unless there's no need, right? Nothing unless, gets in there right? unless something does get in there or you know whatever. But strictly ATO container is strictly just for RODI water, clean water, and, yeah. and a pump that shouldn't be in any other thing but your RODI yep. system. Or, I mean, in your return or auto top off system. So, so this is kind of like an equipment slash maintenance question. Um, heaters, do you wait to till they? mess up and 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 stop working um or do you just have like a like a 12 month time frame that once 12 months hits you replace them like how, how does that work because i don't i have heaters of mine they're nothing great they're like aquion whatever's you know petco uh i would like to get something nicer um but without a controller and you know i don't i'm just using my base, basic thermometer digital thermometer mm -hmm. so like I've only had them for like two or three months. So if they go in six months from now, is that when I change them? Or like I said, should I set like a 12 month schedule and then just not even worry about it and just get a new one, throw mm -hmm. them out? Well, a couple things to that is you don't really know how, you know, how long they're going to last. So you can't just dictate that you're going to buy a new heater every six months. Cause you can just buy that new heater and have it die the next day. It's, mm -hmm. it's all manufactured mass produced. So you can't control the quality essentially. But I, uh, there's two ways to look at it. People who have controllers and people who don't have controllers. So let's look into the people who don't have controllers, how they should do it. Um, obviously buy the best quality that you can afford, period. Buy a brand that's got a good rating that you can control a digital display or has temperature control that can tell you when it's on and off and that's been reliable. So um, I always have two heaters all times in every tank. That's it. Um, what are you using? By the way. I don't even know. They're just some off brand. They're like eBay cheap heaters, but I only but use they're cheap, working. But I only use cheap heaters on a controller. Uh, basically I run two heaters to uh, uh, extension cord essentially and then that connects to one outlet on the apex. I crank the heaters both all the way up and let the apex control the on and off. So the how I know one's dying is if say uh, the temperature 
fluctuates 0.5 degrees every day. So when one would die, it's going to fluctuate, uh, you know, 0.8 degrees every day. And it will do that consistently for a few days. And I'll be like, oh, one of the heaters must be dead. So I'll we'll check and see which one is dead, replace it, continue on as always. How do you figure out which one's not Well, working? I mean, you just, you could feel it turn on, you know, that you turn the heaters on and feel which one has heat coming out of it. Um, and then just replace that one. So the little fluctuations, keeping track of your graphs and the temperatures and catching up on those little things will let you know uh, when the heater is uh, no longer working the way it should. So it's good to know. Like I said, um, you know, uh, a, you know, the apex is just something that I, you know, I'm shooting for. I want to get, but it's just hard. You know, you got, you got a family, you got a kid, you got a house, a car, you have all these bills and now you're trying to throw 500 bucks mm -hmm. plus at an apex. So it's something I will eventually get. I don't know how soon I'd like to get it tomorrow, but well, let me give you a perspective on this whole thing. You know, so how much money do you, would you say you have in your system right now? Just off the top of your head. It's a 30 gallon and it's enough. Well, okay. Uh, so we'll say under just under a grand, maybe. Roughly. Okay. Well, let okay. me, let me explain. Who's watching this video. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. The apex, having an aquarium controller is the best purchase I have ever made. Period. Yeah. Um, I would never run a tank that I ever put any kind of money. In. I've run fresh water plant tanks without it. It's not a big deal, but I would never run a reef tank without one. Uh, the controllability, the alarms and everything are so good to have and make life so much easier. Uh, I wouldn't do it without it. Now, the way you want to look at it and your approach to uh, when I build a reef tank, I look at my priorities. You have to build from a foundation. So you're going to need a tank with an overflow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then you're going to want something that controls the tanks. So my next purchase after purchasing the tank and the stand would be a controller because then you want to build your house on that foundation. Then you can add all the things and the modules and all that good stuff that you want to do later. But then you'll still have that controllability in, in, in the system. And that's what you're looking for. So, um, I always recommend to all my clients is if you're going to make a purchase on a tank, get a controller and make it a good controller. And that's, a, that's yeah. another good thought. I think as a, a guy new to the hobby and never having one, I think we should do for all the noobs out there like me, a, a controller Q and a, because yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, there's so much shit you could do and there's so many questions that I have cost. And I mean, there's just a mm -hmm. ton of questions because of that, I mean, that's, it's a big purchase, you know. It so is, I'd like it to, is, but you have to think about it. If your system, what if you were to leave your house right now for a week and your temperature got too high and your system crashed, pump, you know, you'd lose that grand. Or yeah, you can I have a want to or my you house can, for a week. Well, I'm just saying. I throw, if, if, like I said, I'd throw a hang on the back and hopefully yeah. the best if I left. Well, that's the thing is, I mean, you could leave. I mean, those people who tanks crash after four hours of the power being out. Now, if yeah. you had an apex, it would tell you the power's out and you can do something about it. So it's like, do I spend this much? and have the, the ease of mind and knowing that everything's going to be okay, or do I hold off the purchase and take the risk of losing everything? Here's a side note, uh, you know, uh, off topic. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, um, like, battery backup on your tank? No, I have a generator. So I, I not not connected to it, but if the alarm goes off, I can just be... Just crank it up. Crank yeah. it up, yeah. Well... Yeah, that's it'll have to happen. I mean, well, I mean, if you got to think how much I have in my tank right now, I mean, it. I mean, buying a hundred and fifty dollar generator or lose ten grand. Yeah, you know, I mean, that'd be stupid not to, yep, you know, so here to have one. You know what I'm saying? Um, so back back to the topic. Um, here's another question: Do You clean your reactors and like your dosing pumps. I mean, <laughs> in my opinion, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot to clean in a dosing pump. I don't know. You're pretty meticulous. You could take it apart and. Mm -hmm pipe clean it for all I know. Um, but as far as like reactors, dosing pumps, is that something you deal with on like a month to month basis, three month basis? What are you doing with that? Uh, when I do my GFO change, I clean the reactor. I clean the cartridge that it sits in and all that good stuff. So that's just general maintenance on that. And it's that same with carbon. Um, that's, done along, that's every 30 days when you Yeah, change. every 30 days. So when I do the bio pellet reactor, I think I have a set every two months to go in there and clean out the the inlet and the outlet because of that film. And then I also uh, did a video to take the return pipe to the skimmer out, clean that to try this out. Um, so that's like every month or two or something like that, that I clean the bio pellet reactor. And when it comes to dosing pumps, never cleaned them. I know that there, uh, I think it's the A additive, I believe on the red seat color program. that's kind of like an orange color. Um, I haven't seen any kind of clogging or anything and it works fine. But uh, if I was to clean those, I would uh, just connect them uh, 
and run vinegar through them like manually, just over and over again. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that sounds like a good plan. Because mm-hmm. um, again, you know, I'm, I, eventually I'll have a dosing pump. I'll be new to it. I don't know what to do with it. Um, and I mean, I don't have a ton of more questions. Just kind of off the top of my head, but this is another one I kind of wrote down as we we're talking microalgae. This is kind of it, it is a maintenance question. She's got to deal with it every once in a while. I know you have probably what thirty gallons worth of refugium, so you have a lot of microalgae growing. Um, how often do you like change that? Do you wait till it's stuffed and you like can't they can't grow anymore? No, you- uh, every two weeks I pull out. About five gallons every two. And what are you doing? Are you throwing it? You sell it? What are you doing? I sell it. I mean, I sell it to people all the time, but and it's not something that you ship. I mean, you can ship it, but the price for shipping is almost like why bother even buying. That's it? how I started. I got like a golf ball size off eBay for like five bucks. Yeah. Now it's it's probably the size of like a like a volleyball or something. So it's it's doing well, but I'm getting to the point where I probably have like maybe a four gallon refugium right now, and I have Dragon's Breath and Cato in there, mm-hmm. and I don't know if I should take some Cato out because the Dragon's Breath kind of like struggling. So it's just a, like I said, I don't know if I should wait till it's packed and it's coming out of the water or. Well, you want to pull it out so it, it has to have room to grow. If it doesn't have room, it's not going to grow as well as it should. I'm not saying it won't grow at all, but it, it you know, a lot of people like to tumble it. I, I don't have that option for my situation, but um, yeah, I mean, I have two 100 watt LEDs over that, and uh, yeah. and I run it about 13 hours a day on the off cycle of my tank, and 13. Yeah, thirteen hours, and uh, you're doing reverse reverse cycle. Reverse cycle. Right? Yeah, well, I actually have it. It actually kind of while the while the light is ramping and and falling on the tank, I have it on during that time just to, yeah. you know, as a general. As it's been like that, so but uh, yeah, it's five gallons every two weeks. I most of the time, nine out of ten times, I chuck it in the backyard. But usually, I have you know people stop by and buy it. I sell you know big big clumps for like ten bucks. You know, yeah, huge. You know. You, yeah, that's people. That, that, those or are I donated to Petco one there. or the other. Yeah. Like I said, that, the one I got off eBay, it was like it was like five bucks plus shipping. It ended up being I don't know closer to ten bucks for like a little. Yeah. I mean, I had to. I, my local fish stores didn't have it. I didn't know you at the time. I mean, so I, was, I bought it. So I mean, that little investment really did me well because it's it's thriving right now. But well, I know that. I mean, right now, like flat rate shipping box is like six dollars and seventy cents. I can send it anywhere, and if somebody wants to pay for that, I mean, I'll send you know an entire box full for you know ten fifteen bucks and mail it out. I mean, if they want to pay for shipping, so you'll get your money's worth. But you know it. Usually, like I said, I either throw it out, either I either donate to Peco, but they don't get rid of it fast enough before the next two weeks comes out, uh, or uh, you know, I just you know, sell to people who want to come by and pick it up. So yeah. Well, I mean, as far as my predetermined questions, that's about it. So I mean, it's been good. I I, I did learn a lot. I mean, can't wait for the seventy five to get going so I can actually put this stuff to use. But dude, I appreciate you taking time again. This has been it's fun. Cool. It's cool. Um, I think. Like we talked about the apex, that that should be another topic covered because there's guys like me who have like a smaller setup that would like you know to to take their mind off their tank from time to time and not have to just worry all the time. Mm-hmm. There's guys that have tanks that are thinking about it but don't really know. I mean, there's videos all over YouTube that show you everything, but once you really get to ask the questions that you want to ask with someone who uses it, that's that's when you gain mm-hmm. the most knowledge. Um, yeah. So I think that should be a category, and I also think we we, we, have, we still haven't covered livestock yet. No, um, and coral clean up crews. So, I mean, coral, there's, yeah. there's still a lot that we could talk about. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, this this hobby never ends, so that's for sure. Um, all right, man. Well, hey, I appreciate it, and uh, as always, guys, I'm gonna put uh, Mike's channel uh, in the description below. And uh, if you like the video, like it. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section below. And as always, I appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks. Peace.